John Lee once compared life to an ocean. People floating around, going all over the place, very rarely making it to land. All too often the waves rise up and wash over us and drown us. He says, but if you have the practice, you have everything you need in order to get to land. The goodness that comes from your generosity, that's like the food that you need on the ship. Your restraint of the senses, that's looking after the ship to make sure that it doesn't leak. And then for water, he says, you do meditation. It's like distilling the salt water all around you and turning it into fresh water. In other words, when you have the skills of meditation, wherever you are, you can take whatever happens, whatever you notice in terms of what you see or hear, smell, taste, touch, think about, you can turn it into dharma so the mind isn't threatened. Good things happen, and you learn how not to let the good things overcome you. Bad things happen, and you learn how not to let them overcome you either. You take it all as lessons that real happiness isn't, doesn't lie outside. It lies in the goodness you can develop in the heart. When you have that understanding, when you can take all the things that happen and turn them into dharma, then you can go anywhere in the world. You go across the ocean and have fresh water all the way, because you know how to distill the fresh water out of the salt water. There's another passage where he compares fresh water to the heart that's free of defilement. Salt water, of course, is the, our, our, norm, our normal heart, the normal state of the mind. And it's not the case that you have to create fresh water out of something else. The fresh water is there in the salt water. But at the same time, you can't just sort of let things sit and do nothing and let the fresh water separate from the salt. The only way you get the salt to separate from the fresh water is to distill it. Okay, the fire of the st distillery stands for your effort that we put into the meditation, getting the mind to concentration, and then trying to understand where there is still greed, aversion, and delusion in the mind, and burning that away as well. You burn it away through your discernment, through being able to separate the, the defilement out from the mind. See that even though there may be these thoughts in the mind, you don't have to identify with them. You can stand back and observe them. And you don't have to be eating or drinking salt water all the time. You can get the fresh water that's in there if you use your distillery, use your concentration, use your discernment. That way you can travel all over the world, and when the time comes to come to land, you have enough strength to make it to land. You won't be overcome by the winds outside or the waves. You won't suffer thirst, even when surrounded by salt water. You hear many times of people who've been stuck in boats and have to go across the, the ocean, and their main problem is that thirst. Salt water is everywhere, and they can't drink anything. But with the distillery of your meditation, you can take that salt water and turn it into fresh water. That way you can feel at home wherever you are. You can be in America, you feel at home. You can be in Asia, in Europe, you still feel at home. Because you've got all you need in order to, to provide for your true happiness, to bring the mind to a state of purity. So that no matter whether aging comes or illness comes, or even if death comes, you realize there's a part of the mind that doesn't have to grow ill, doesn't have to age, doesn't have to die. That's the fresh water that keeps you going. 